want to understand what people think the world is, ask them what they think the world is made of. What is it actually made of? Is it made out of goop? Is it made out of chaos? Is it made out of hydrogen? What is it made from? If you look at the truck, it's like, okay, so this is, this is steel. What's it made, what's the steel made from? What's it made out of? And you say, well, we dug it out of the earth and we melted it down and we created steel from iron and, and so on. Go beyond the molecular level, go to the atomic level. What are the atoms made of? Electrons, protons, nuclei, one per atom, please. What's the nucleus made of? What's the electron made of? And they'll tell you, well, there's up quarks and there's down quarks. There's leptons and there's elementary particles. What are those? What are they made of? Have you ever seen one? And the answer is no, they, they haven't seen one. No evolutionist, no Darwinist, no total secular atheist can answer this question of what's it made of? The answer in the end is nothing. We're not Buddhists that you know, think that there's no real reality, it's all illusion. The, the miracle, the magic of it is that it's, it's real. That hurt. I can, I can hurt myself on this stuff. This is tangible stuff, spoken, and now it's here. A lot of Christians wonder why God isn't present anymore. Where is he? Where is he gone? And the answer is, he's, he's right here, he's talking. Because if he wasn't, this truck, this uh, sturdy old truck, wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. With the power of his, well, dare I say it, magic, it's here. And it's all spoken. And you want to know if he's still around? You want to know if he's still talking? He's not speaking in English, which is what we want him to do. Please, God, tell me what to do for lunch today. He won't. He'll tell you something like, Two hot dogs and a Coke for $1.99 from nothing over there. You get all this talking, constant talking. You've got a squirrel in the road getting run over. You're saying, what do I do on my test? Am I going to pass this test? And he says, squirrel and really quiet car. The end. You know, another little narrative that, that goes on around you. And we ignore it all. We just walk through with our heads down, pretending like it's not really here, wondering, where's God? It's like, I don't know. Maybe he's, you know, spinning a sphere through space at Mach 86, caring about you while you're actually going about your business. Once you actually understand that the world is spoken, once you understand that this is a word, that I am a word, that you are a word, that this entire world is a swirl of story, you have to then ask yourself what kind of character you are. Which character are you? Who are you? Are you the guy who's there just to make the actual hero look good? Are you the guy who's there just to, to die as a morality tale, as a lesson, a cautionary tale for other people? And you might not be one of the real villains. You might not be a lecherous youth pastor or an unfaithful husband. You might not be egregiously bad, but you might be, well, you are something. You are the backstabbing friend. You are the, the irritable dad. You are the horrible boyfriend. You are the gossip of a girlfriend. You are a complainer, you are a whiner, you are someone. And you are someone that you would probably not actually like if you saw them on screen. You probably wouldn't actually like that character if you read that character, as described by a master novelist, in a book. Think about the story. The, the story exists. Trials come. Minor trials and macro trials. Kids spill milk. Do you snap at them? Do you lose it? Your pipes freeze. Your girlfriend leaves you. Who are you? in that story. We always assume we are sympathetic. We assume that we have our own soundtracks, that we exist in some sort of indie hipster film that's about us and our idiosyncrasies and makes us sort of quirky and lovable. That's not what's going on. You might not be the star. We should be laughing because God's laughing. We should be sacrificing ourselves because God sacrifices his own son. We should be like him. We should be those characters. You know your thoughts. You know your temptations. You hide them from everybody else, but they're real and those are part of your character. Deal with those, become a more interesting character. Become a character that's not bored and therefore not boring in this world.